Welcome back to the next video of this series about the MPEG-H Offering plugin. In this one, we will have a look at the user interface of the MPEG-H Offering plugin and learn more about metadata. After opening the plugin, you first have to select your reference layout. This is the format we are producing in. In our case, it's a 5.1 plus 4 with three commentator objects. So the reproduction setup is going to be a 5.1 plus 4. But important to mention is that this selection is independent from the monitoring system, which is just stereo in our case. The target setup defines the loudspeaker system we intend to produce in. So users at home with a 5.1 plus 4 speaker setup or a 3D soundbar, for instance, can enjoy it. All others will get a rendering to a speaker system with less speakers. Actually, similar to what we have here, just stereo. Remember, this is what we call universal delivery. If this is the first time you hear about universal delivery, then check out the first video. So let's have a look at the MPEG-H plugin user interface. First, we have a section which is called components. Then we have presets, monitoring, and finally, on the right-hand side, there is the export. But before we actually can start our MPEG-H offering, let me first explain you a bit more about MPEG-H metadata. For this, I will quickly show you some slides. In this diagram, you can see the hierarchy of MPEG-H metadata. All metadata of your MPEG-H programs, so-called MPEG-H scenes, will look like this or similar. So what do we have here? First of all, we have something which is called audio scene information. Then we have components and something called a switch group. You may see already that this diagram represents the signals we have in our Pro Tools session. A 5.1 plus 4 bad, three objects, English, French and German commentator. So what do these labels mean? The audio scene information includes all general information about our MPEG-H scene, such as the reproduction setup, loudness values, number of objects, content kinds, and so on. The components are the smallest addressable unit in an MPEG-H audio scene, consisting of one or more channels. These channels can be combined to components forming our elements of an MPEG-H scene. In this case here, we have 13 audio channels carrying audio data. The first 10 channels will be combined to our 5.1 plus 4 ambience bed. Channel 11, 12 and 13 will be defined as mono components, each one representing a language. In order to ensure that the user at home can only select one of the languages at the same time, we combine them into a so-called switch group. That means that only one member of a switch group can be selected at a time. It would not make any sense that the user can hear multiple languages at the same time, but it does make sense that they can hear one language together with the ambience bed. Makes sense, right? So now we know more about MPEG-H metadata. But how can we transmit this? And how can we ensure that the metadata is always present, never gets lost and is always frame accurate to our audio and video signals? MPEG-H has a solution for this, the so-called MPEG-H control track. So I will jump to the next slide in which you can see an SDI signal, including video and maximum 16 audio channels. And if you have a look to the 16th channel, there is something called control track. All of our MPEG-H scene related metadata, the audio scene information, components, labels and so on, are stored in this track. The control track carrying all of our modulated MPEG-H metadata. And if you would listen to the control track, it sounds like that. The big advantage of the control track is that it's just a regular PCM audio track and can be also handled like that. It means you can import all metadata into any audio or video workstation cut it everywhere you like, replace it with a different control track or just trim the control track. In each corresponding video frame, there are all metadata repeated. 
That means MPEG-H metadata is always bundled with our audio and video signals and never gets lost. And another great feature is, the MPEG-H metadata is fully compatible with any today's audio and video software or live broadcasting equipment, such as a mixing console or an SDI router. Because it's just an audio track. And this exact same signal is what we're gonna export out of our Pro Tools session. Audio plus metadata. And this is what we call the MPEG-H production format. And now you maybe understand why we are using the third order Ambisonics bus in Pro Tools. Because we can feed up to 15 audio channels into the plugin and export 15 audio channels plus metadata on channel 16. And in the next video, we can finally start our MPEG-H authoring process. So see you there.